Sup humans, every time I say Final Fantasy, take a drink, see what happens. If you survive, good for you. By the title of this video, you know what I'm going to be talking about, and I've been trying to film a video all day. I just can't figure out what to talk about. There's so much to talk about. You got Final Fantasy. The, I can talk about why I like Final Fantasy, the reasons I like it. What makes a Final Fantasy game a Final Fantasy game? What makes the characters so just unique? My favorite cast of characters, my favorite soundtrack, of what just, there's so many things. I can talk about anything all day, Final Fantasy. But. I guess I'm gonna just talk about my experience with my first Final Fantasy game uh, and hey, where, where it took me and how I was introduced to it. Uh, I believe I talked about this or touched a little bit upon this in my gaming history video a while back, but you know what? I'm gonna just go ahead and bring it here. Why not? So, Final Fantasy, I first started this or started playing Final Fantasy a long time ago. I remember walking into a room, uh, my aunt's room, and she was play like, my, my entire family is gamers. They're, they're all gamers. And there was a game right there, and I think uh, my my aunt, she was playing, she was playing Final Fantasy VII. That was for sure. She was playing Final Fantasy VII. And if I remember correctly, it was, she had just gotten it, and it was, it was right after, uh, it was right when Cloud and, Cloud had just, dead, like, I guess the bomb detonated in the Mako reactor, and he had fell down to uh, the Outer Haven, the church, and then, you know, he meets Aerith, and I remember looking at the game, and I was just like, that game looks really cool, like, I, I looked at it, then I saw the battle system, and how it all worked, and how complex it was, and it, it just looked something that, it was really intriguing, so, not only that, but the music was amazing, and let me just tell you guys that the reason, like, I... I did get real close to the Final Fantasy series was because of the music. That's one of the major things. That and the characters and all that. But music more overall is because I would, I'm, a, I'm a musician and I started off real young. I started playing music when I was really young. So when I heard good music, I was just, pff, man, video games music, like sometimes, or video game music could just, it, it could just make me go and play the game. That's how it works for me. But anyways, I remember hearing the music and I was just like, oh man. That's some good music. So, eventually, I do get my copy. I do play Final Fantasy. And Final Fantasy VII was one of those games that I started playing it, and it was everything that I thought of. Back then, I didn't think of graphics, really. Like, I just played a game because it was a game. I could have... I saw PlayStation 2 graphics, and yeah, they looked cool, but it just... Nothing touched Final Fantasy the way it touched me. Like, it, it was really good. Especially the way the story was written, the characters. The way I saw, you know, characters develop, and the... There's one part, you guys know what I'm talking about. At the end of disc one of Final Fantasy VII, just knowing how much effort I put into certain char a certain character, and just seeing that character go like that, like just like that. My first thought in my mind was my materia, like that was that was pretty much my, my reaction. I was more worried about the materia at the second. But then the piano music started playing and I was just like, oh dang, is this legit? And yeah, that was like kind of one of the first times I saw a main character die in a video game. I was just kind of like, that is legit. That, that actually happened. And then, yeah, through the entire game, then you kind of see how they deal with this loss in your party. And I'm just, as there as a kid, I'm just like, oh man, you know, this, the feels are right here. Like right there. As a fun, as like, I played through Final Fantasy VII. I started, I started getting really into it. And then I, Eventually, yeah, I went after the ultimate weapon. I did the chocobo, gold breeding, emerald weapon, ruby weapon. I did I, everything I could. I would search up stuff. You never. I would sometimes go when I would go to the stores. I would always ask my parents, "Hey, can I go to the you know the game section?" And they'd have these strategy guides. Um, and guys, I don't know if like uh, games don't do it anymore. We don't need strategy guides. You have the internet, really. They really that's what we have. And. Like, you can just look it up on the internet, or you don't look at the strategy guides when you go to the game places, because almost all the games are online. But back then, there was really no online games, so I would go over there, and internet was slow, by the way. Like, my internet would take, like, 
I think like 10 minutes to open a page or something or like a day to download a song. It was ridiculous. But that's why I didn't use the internet. Like, well, we would use it sometimes. But anyways, besides the point, I would go to these sections with the strategy guides and I would open up the books. And it's just like, you either had your notepad, you try to write something down before someone would catch you or you would, you kind of like read it like, oh, where's that section on that? And you put it up or you would always ask your parents like, hey, can I buy this? They'd say no, obviously. So that's why you would have to <laughs> write things down in a notepad. Then you go back home and you do things like whatever. And I think it was a, I forgot what magazine it was, but it was on how to get uh, Ufi, and you had to follow a specific command, uh, a specific uh, layout. Every time you met her, you had to talk to her in a specific way, answer questions in a specific way, and that's one of those things that, like, games like that, that, like, really have the player, like, you have to go search for things, it is amazing. Like, I love it when games do that. If they're super hard and complex like that, and you don't know how to do certain things, I like that. Especially when you go to school and sometimes you hear about these things like, hey, did you get the ultimate weapon? You have to do this thing. When there's, like I said, when there is a line of activities that you need to do to get something really rewarding, it just felt really good back then. No, no, it doesn't feel as great now as it did back then. Um, but I remember just doing that. Then I went back and I went and played Final Fantasy Origins and, and the Anthology. And then... When I played Final Fantasy the Anthology, that is when I hit my next mark. Like I felt like, man, this is another Final Fantasy game that is amazing. Final Fantasy VI on there was just one of the best games that I had ever played on a like 16-bit form. Right next to Super Metroid. Super Metroid and F-Zero are like my favorite of all time, but Final Fantasy III I was like right there. And or six. Because I remember when I booted up that game and I saw that opening scene. It was kind of one of those things where I just kind of looked at it and I'm just like, man, that game looks like just the, the atmosphere. It just fits so well with the music and how Tara's marching in on that mech suit and she's like controlled by her, like by Kefka and everybody. It, it is so cool to see that. Then Final Fantasy VIII was out and nine and eight and nine, eight I do enjoy. I understand why people don't enjoy eight as much, but uh, the whole Guardian Force thing, I think that, that was a little off for me. And 9, I don't know why people don't like it. I love the art style. But that one is probably one of the more depressing Final Fantasies i played. Uh, and it, it was just kind of one of those things. Like I feel like the PlayStation era of Final Fantasies, the 3D ones, like 7, 8, and 9, those are like the granddaddies. Those are like the ones that you look at and you're just like, those are the big boys right there. Those are the ones who did the most for the Final Fantasy series. They moved them away from the medieval stuff and then they put them in sci-fi then they put them back in medieval but with a different art style it was just so cool and as time went on it was just kind of like like i saw final fantasy 10 final fantasy 10 was the one that i wanted to play so bad and because it looked so great all final fantasy games look good that's really what it was because it was all through text and the text was so well written and the music was so well implemented into the game it was kind of like you were watching a cinematic movie with no words it was so amazing but final fantasy 10 introduced voice acting and a love story the, the a really decent love story actually and uh, if you saw my last video on final fantasy 10 I actually got my Final Fantasy X copy, my first one, from my friend Malik, which, like I said, Malik, if you see this, I still have your Final Fantasy X copy, it's like down there, but it, it was so, it was a great experience, because I remember playing it, and it looked so cool, the graphics were amazing, and the water levels, I just thought that whole water aesthetic was just, it blew my mind, because it was one of the first times I'd seen water, and I'm just like, water looks cool in a video game, it looks really good. And then we get into Final Fantasy XI. Final Fantasy X, right after it went by... Well, no, not Final Fantasy XI. Final Fantasy X-2. One of the final Final Fantasy games I just did not beat. Uh, I did not beat it. I just kind of like... I got real close to beating it, which I probably will beat it eventually. But it was one of those things... I enjoyed the music, but it's just the tone didn't set right with me. I don't know why it just didn't work for me. Uh, final Fantasy XI came around, and that ended up being an MMO online. And oh my goodness, the hours that you would waste on that game. Oh, man. That is another game that my aunt, she ended up playing, and man, she, that was one of those things she was really into. It was like, next to World of Warcraft type stuff. You could play on the PlayStation 2, it could be cross-play with PlayStation 2, Xbox, 360, and PS, or not PSP, PS, or PC, PC, ah. Uh, I, play, I did play Final Fantasy XI online, I actually, 
whoops, I do have uh, my the entire collector's edition, well not the collector's, but you know the entire thing uh, for the Xbox, and not only that, I do have it on the PS2 as well, um, and not, after Final Fantasy XI, because I don't, like Final Fantasy XI, it was one of those, Final Fantasy XI was one of those that like you pl you paid to play online, and it was really cool. You had the great experiences. It's only available on PC now, so if you want to play Final Fantasy XI, play it while it's out and before they close the servers, because eventually it will go. But Final Fantasy XIV is out, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Then came Final Fantasy XII, and this is this is the Final Fantasy I feel that is the oddball in all Final Fantasy games. This one is the one that I just kind of feel that not a lot of people played. And it, it sucks because it was a really great game. It, it, it's so, it looks so good, but it came out in 2006. In 2006, PlayStation 2 was ending. PS3 and Xbox 360 were taking over. And people really didn't want to put forth money for a Final Fantasy game that's on an old console. We were kind of looking forward to a new HD Final Fantasy. And overall, it sucks that not a lot of people played it. And people who did play it, they felt weird about it because it's more like a... It was more fitted like an MMO type game. It, it did not have your traditional turn-based gameplay like the other Final Fantasies. It was a really odd way to play the game. But it worked so well, eventually as the combat went on, it got more complicated. And I did enjoy the combat a lot. And the music was just... The music and atmosphere in that game were just some of those things that I just felt like it just... Like I said, it works really well. The Final Fantasy games never get it wrong when it comes to art style. Then, 13 came out. Final Fantasy 13 came out, and let me tell you guys, everyone bashed this game. I was not one of those people. I, I was not. I really enjoyed those games. I didn't. I, I did not have a lot of access to the internet. I had access to online, like you know, place PSN and all that. But I didn't have a lot of access to you know the internet. I didn't really look stuff up. So I would just play my games and enjoy them. And the cast of characters in that game, the art style, the graphics, the gameplay. I love the gameplay. Uh, and a lot of people were pissed off that it wasn't open world. But once you got to Grand Pulse, I think that the game really opened up. And it was just one of those things that I really enjoyed uh, playing through. I, I did multiple playthroughs of the game, leveling up my characters, making sure that they were all maxed out, uh, doing the secret uh, bosses, you know, the side quests. A lot of stuff opened up in Grand Pulse. And it just sucks for people who didn't get past that 8 hour mark. It sucks that you didn't get past that mark because after the eight hour mark, I think the game really opens up and it's a totally different game that y'all should really try. Uh, the story, I do think it was a little, it could have been better, it could have been better explained, but I do think overall it was a fantastic story. And you get into Final Fantasy XIV, yes, you saw a terrible release with that game, but I like the first version, but when the Realm Reborn came out and they fixed all the problems that it had. I think it just made it a worthy successor to an MMORPG, and it's one of the my most played games right now. I do play Final Fantasy XIV a lot, uh, and the new expansion just came out, so I've been playing that too. Then you have Final Fantasy XV, and just the characters in Final Fantasy XV, I think they were just so well done. They talk to each other, they interact with each other during battle, they interact with each other depending on their environments and stuff. It's just so well put together, and I just hope that Square Enix, for your next Final Fantasy games, I just hope that you can nail these things. All the aesthetics, all the best things about these Final Fantasy games, and just make them make the greatest game that you can out of this. Because Final Fantasy is something that we all enjoy, and it's something that uh, they've always been a treat, no matter what game it is. Even I even enjoy Final Fantasy XIII 2 and Lightning Returns until the ending, but they were all great games. And I think in Final Fantasy 16, y'all can really know that if you get the best things of every Final Fantasy game and just mash them up into one. And just focus. Don't feel like you need to rush things out. But that's kind of my start with Final Fantasy games and just kind of what I liked. A little bit of things, what I liked about each Final Fantasy game. I don't really talk much about 5 and back, but I will in a different video. But anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. I will do more videos uh, this week in Final Fantasy week. I will have a new video coming up. My last video will be uh, about what I like about Final Fantasy and which one you should start out with. So, that's my last video. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. And remember guys, when you guys are gaming, power up.